All right, what's going on? Happy Friday. Can you guess where we are today? Can you guess, can you guess, can you guess? Back at my favorite spot. And I brought lots of plastic bags today for the prime out. Uno. Dos. And you know what? I'll save one more for further up the line, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uno, dos. Thought I had one more bag. Maybe not. Nope. Uno, dos. Trez, there you go. It's my best impersonation of a proper bilingual Canadian. Anyhow, we're gonna get set up here. And uh, maybe I'll take a little peek and show you what we're pouring first. Anyhow, here we go. 70 cubic meters of walls. Usual setup. We'll do our usual hill setup here and get rocking and rolling with this, uh, this wall pour. It's gonna be a good day. But anyhow, we're running short on time here, so this is gonna be a, a bang, 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 expedited setup. Check. I always kick my stack ahead a bit because as the pump loads up, that pad's gonna slide ahead on the stack. So I start with the leg for more more rearwards on the stack. About like that. Drop the side down. Oh, nice. That's the kind of day it's gonna be. Get that one. We'll lift this back up. Put the, I should put the grip pad down, we'll just jack it up first. Okay, now crank it up. Yeah, he'll crank this up. And then once we get it up, that back leg is gonna effectively hold it in position. We're gonna take that front corner up too. So you're essentially holding the pump triangulated through the subframe to keep it elevated. So he's gonna bring that one up there too. Take it all the way up. We'll plant that back one. Like so. Lift this one up. Here comes the amazing levitating pump. Oh my God, it's magic, people. Cool. And then same thing, we'll position this stack as such to take into account our outrigger walking forward when we load it up. So we'll start off with the outrigger foot towards the back of the stack slightly. Maybe slightly more, we'll pull it ahead just a hair. I like that, that's pretty good. Bottom these up together, because my OCD says so. Good. All right. 
Now watch when he cranks this up, that leg will walk forward a bit. It should center itself up perfectly on that stack. Excellent. As you can see right now, we're ever so slightly touching down on the concrete. We don't want that. So we're gonna bring the back end up a little bit too. As he drops this leg down, it'll pick the pump up and it'll pull our back end. There we go. Out of the concrete block. Perfect. Uh, future upcoming video, I am going to take on that project of trimming down that hopper skirt. I mentioned it in a previous video. Maybe I'll insert the documentation here again. Maybe I won't. Anyhow, we're going to take that on. Bring that up a couple inches, shorten this back step by a couple inches. It'll be way better for hills like this. So, anyhow, of course, of course, of course, the wheel chalk. Da, da, da. Always, always, always on a hill. Always with the wheel chalk. Okay, we're going to clamp some hoses together here and uh, get set up. Same as last time. Prime the bentonite all the way through the 24 meter, all the way down the hill, right into the back of the 38 meter here, and then he'll reprime. And once again, we are not going into the deck pipe. Reason being, we anticipate some delays today. So we don't want to uh, eliminate our option to being able to recirculate at least through the one pump. So, and it's only 70 cubic meters. So this is how we do it. Big commercial pours. Yes, we'll tie into the deck pipe. There are advantages there, but on a small pour like this, there's more. The disadvantages outweigh the advantages. So. And we'll poke a couple little holes in the bag so the air doesn't rupture the bag before the primer gets to it. Top side of the bag, just a couple little holes. Should we do the mouth too? Canadian Concrete Pumper is the best channel on YouTube. That's what he said, you heard it right there. Right from the baggie's mouth. smartest thing we'll do all day which may not be saying a whole lot but maybe one more bucket like that one more one more yeah for an easy wash out we don't want to miss prime time prime time is the best time This is the best part, I can't miss this. <laughs> the primer going in the hose, it's great. It's great. Do both buckets. I would save some, like a little bit of food. Oh no, we're gonna go all the way through. We don't need any more. <laughs> we're gonna blow our bent night wad on the first attempt. Oh yeah. Beauty, okay. All right, rock and roll. Concrete cow. Beautiful. Pretty rocky, actually. What's that, Jack? What I'll do, I'll throw my auger back the other way. The first pitch rocky like that, I like to do that. Okay. Let's clear back and forward. So we have, we have, we have one bucket of bent night in the prime port. Don't forget the hammer. And one full bucket in the hose here. No, 
nothing yet. Oh, there it is. Gonna slow right down, Jag. They're almost just gonna let gravity do the work here. Plastic bags are oh, doing their thing. We're sitting right at this bag here. Plastic bag go pop. No, and it plugs right there. Hold up. Plug. Do you have your air cuff on? I'll just I'll just break it here rather than messing around trying to bang it through the whole way. It'll be a, a ball of segregation. Bloop. And we'll shake a little bit of that out and reconnect this. <laughs> okay, put your water in. Yep. Tell me, give it some. One bump in the volume. We're getting a lot more distance to the wall there, eh? No, 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 this is all going to go on the ground. The first, first half of me, this is just ground. Put an auger in reverse for a minute, just to pull that rock away from the bell. Just so you get a couple clips off. Here we go, rock and roll, it's prime time. Another day in paradise, almost quite literally, except for the lack of sunshine and balmy temperatures. Quite a bit. It's... All right, so what we got here is these exterior wing walls are actually board form finish. I'll get some footage from the top so you can see what I'm talking about. We're gonna use external vibrators as well as a conventional internal vibrator. These externals help get rid of that little little bit of pinholing you sometimes get against the surface of the plywood. So we'll internally vibrate it first. And once when they've done that, they'll buzz these for about 10 seconds. First four feet of the wall here is not exposed, so they're not concerned about that. So we're going to start at about this mark here and work these up. About every three-ish feet, we'll have a vibe. Three to six feet, or three feet in height, six feet horizontally. We just buzz our way all the way up for beautiful. Something like this. See the board form panel in the wall here. So when they strip that off, it'll look like a wooden plank. It's an amazing thing. Beautiful forms here. Oh, it steps in at the top. Yeah, exactly. So the insulation and siding are flush with our board form. Oh, the details, yeah. man, the details. Yeah. All right, we are rocking and rolling, pumping away here. This is actually going relatively quick. All things considered. Had to break the hose apart on the prime, as you can see, got some remnants there. Our old plastic bags didn't do what we needed them to do today. So, no big whoop. The 
beautiful. Every day is a good day in this neck of the woods. You know the video from two weeks ago from which one came? 20,000 views. Okay. Yeah, in 10 days. With the, was that the one you got the comment about Slick Pack? Yes, that was the one. What do you think of Slick Pack? For priming through rubber hose. <laughs> you can say it. I think it's absolutely terrible for priming through rubber hose. Anytime I've ever tried it. It works well for priming through a boom. Yeah, through, yeah, through steel pipe. There's a buddy of mine that was saying the trick is, he says it'll go through a boom in like 400 feet of line. He says you mix the gel in the bucket, you let it sit for like 20 minutes, and then when you pour it in the prime port, it's got to be in the prime port. The gel sits at the top of the bucket, the water sits at the bottom. So he pours the gel out, as soon as he gets to the water, he gets rid of it. So he's just putting the gel in. He says it's something to do with the transition from the gel to the water that causes the plug. And this guy, he is very knowledgeable, so I put faith in what he says, but yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I the instructions on that thing, you're supposed to uh, put it into the, uh, the hopper, pull the hopper up and get the back, essentially the buckets the, the, the hopper. Yeah, or just some guys roll it through the hose first. I don't know. I've tried everything, man, and I just can't. Uh, somebody out there's got to make a video on slick pack priming because I want to see it. Because either we're doing something way, way wrong, or it just doesn't work with our material here. But maybe we'll do a, a test one day. We'll do a little test and show you the results that we're getting, and uh, maybe we can uh, pick up some helpful tips of what we can do differently. All right, a little break in the action here. We've caught up on all the trucks. Other day to my little video yo on recirculating. And I feel like I didn't give enough time, attention, care and due diligence to this fancy hopper lid. So I make these lids out of quarter inch thick arena board, which is very Canadian of me. They use this stuff to line the boards for ice hockey rinks. So we get it a four by eight sheet, cut it to size. I do a little notch here for our uh, RFID switch to accommodate that. But most importantly, I do a little notch. Too bad this hose is in the way. I can show you a little better. I do a little notch in the bottom here. The reason why I do that, if I ever have to recirculate, my hopper's been left a little bit low. When I throw this board on, it leaves me a little space here where I can recirculate the concrete back into the hopper. Meanwhile, with the board in place, it covers and shields up close to the opening to the cylinders where you get all your air popping from when you're sucking air. So put this board in place with a very low hopper. I can still, and I'll be catching a little bit of air, but I do it nice and slow. I can still recirculate right through this spot here. So that's why we did that. The other reason why we have this little notch, and this is quite helpful as well. If you ever have a job on a busy street or you need to prime out this way for whatever reason, and you got cars or people that way with the little notch here, put the camera in my mouth. Can jam the board right on the side of the hopper here you got a nice little splash guard keep concrete from splashing that way so yeah super handy i uh, use a piece of uh, nylon rope here drill a couple holes for the board knots on both sides as a handle best thing ever or what do you ever recirculate when your hopper is low with the board on and just through the opening even though you're popping air that's my biggest selling feature just say you do he does all the time. Sid does all the time. Anyhow, yeah, one eighth, or sorry, one quarter inch thick arena board. That's what you want to get yourself. Quarter inch thick arena board. All right, so you've been running the aircom two weeks now? Yeah. What do you think? Good. We still got it. I haven't had a chance I'm, to uh, tune it yet. I've got. The, I remember almost everything. I got the PDF for tuning the boom controls. We just haven't done that yet. So, what's the battery life been like? Good. Is it? What's Good. the most most you've run it for in a day, without having to put it on the charger? Oh, I've been running without putting on charger for a week. What? For a week, I've been running like that. Not, I've, I've not put on charging. Do you use the wireless charger? No, I just use this, and I've been running it. Then. What? What's the battery at? When you turn it off, it's like, it looks like 60%. 60% you haven't charged it all week? No. Okay. Probably pumped like 50. Three jobs. Three jobs. Yeah. So you've put about 20 hours on it. Yeah. Because I did uh, 
two back to back jobs on Wednesday as well. Okay, like. okay, so and two full days. Hours, that was 10 hours. Okay, so you've okay, so you've done 20 hours and it's not even half uh, half run down on the battery. Yeah. Wow. The battery life is really good. Yeah, no kidding. On That's the amazing. Remote as well, battery life is good. Yeah. And that, the connectivity, connectivity on this remote. Yeah. I go, I like, I did a job at uh, Main Street Science World, that building up there. Yeah. So I went through the hole on the back side, through the stairs up, and then still it was connected. I didn't honk. I just started really? operating. Yes. So it's better than the, than yeah, the old yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, so good. Yeah. You. Hey, Jag. With this stuff being full of uh, Kim Crystal, I wouldn't worry about holding the truck. I would just, just run them out, get them out here, get them to the plant, and get another one back. It's not going to set for hours. Hey, thanks, so. This, uh, this mix has Kim Crystal in it, waterproofing, which retards the concrete significantly. Um, I'm guessing it's because the crystal prevents the water from hydrating out of the concrete, seals the moisture in. The idea with the Kim Crystal is for waterproofing when the concrete's cured to uh, make it less permeable to moisture. But anyhow, yeah, normally we would hold this truck at three meters until the next guy got here so we could keep it moving. But uh, this mix is not going anywhere on a cool day like today. So we'll just empty him out. And the quicker he gets back to the plant to haul another load, the quicker we get service, in theory. Or maybe the quicker somebody else gets service. Interesting debate. See here with this mix. This thing's not even working. Pressures are way down. I should mention on this thing, 200 bar is the equivalent to about 300 bar when it's plumbed over to uh, the rod side. This one is a piston side. So we tune the relief valve down to limit it to 200 bar, which equates to 85 bar line pressure for the boom pipe, which is what it's rated for. And when we plug into a high rise right off the back end, we'll tweak that back up to 300 bar for uh, full maximum performance. even registering on the temperature gauge hardly so like I said it's like 80 feet of three inch hose we don't do pump pump into a pump via the deck pipe unless we're doing several hundred meters and trying to put down 80 plus an hour for a large commercial port for this kind of resi stuff we almost always just go hose into hopper just for logistical reasons it makes makes way more sense even though it is a little bit extra wear and tear on the second pump and a little bit more fuel burn, but. actually going really well so far bang 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 we are on uh, truck number five of nine nine trucks we've got coming actually ten trucks nine and a half trucks so we're on number five already so we're doing pretty good we should be out of here uh, plenty of time for dinner you want to see perhaps what is the softest truck in the entire concrete pumping industry it's okay I can own it I can own it it's like an Accord with a pickup truck bed on it. It's amazing. What is a concrete pumper keeping his truck? 
a whole bunch of crap. My pumps are clean. My truck is an absolute disaster. We got all the necessities, extra boots, hard hat, battery charger, Coney shock absorbers for a 79 to 93 Mustang if anybody's looking. A whole whack of AJ's t-shirts, coveralls, gloves, more t-shirts, tire sealant, sponges, sponges in the back. Even though I hate square sponges, good for emergencies. Full tool kit. My favorite feature of the ridge line is the uh, the hidden tool kit. Until the smack heads figure out that the uh, the tub is made of composite and they figure out how to cut through there the saws all and steal all your shit, which is kind of what they do in the big city. COVID test kits, <laughs> very important. Oh, look what we got here from the archives. From way back in the day before uh, Maury and Hunter were stealing all the ACPA fame. Spring 2019, that's a long time ago. I think I posted a YouTube short recently with uh, some footage from this poor. Ah, uh, yeah, back in the good old days. Anyhow, oh, God, and a pair of uh, Pit Viper douchebag glasses. Uh, we will get back at her here, anyhow. I just wanted to give you a uh, quick tour of what a uh, concrete pumper's pickup truck looks like if said concrete pumper is a complete and utter slob. Oh, but the best part? Tricked out. Well, you can't make this stuff up. The conservation officer just came by. Yeah. You ever seen a bear before? In real life? No? Maybe today. Then I speak to him clearly and slowly. You speak to him clearly? And calmly. <laughs> and calmly. Just like it says, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna bolt for the cab and lock the doors. I'm gonna lock all these guys out. See the conservation guy came by, like literally 20 minutes ago. He came by to put the sign up. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Two days ago, we were sitting the bear just walked by on the like right here. Well, yeah, he said it was spotted down below there yesterday or something. No, it was walking on the road. It was right here. Yeah. A cub or like a cub or a full size? It's just a big bear, yeah. Oh wow, okay. Well, we'll see if we can't bait it with some Tim Hortons. Stay tuned for possible live bear footage coming at you. So one of our external vibrators here, as soon as you plug it in, boink, goes the circuit breaker. So uh, we're down to one vibrator, which is fine. That's the thing with these things. They pretty much rattle themselves to pieces, so they're super high maintenance. And I think, I think they're about 1200 bucks a piece. So if you're using these things every day, be ready for a uh, high cost of maintenance. It's pretty normal with these. All right, here we are, load seven of 9.5. All is well. Strapped her hose up here in one one additional location because it was kind of kind of pulling itself down the hill a little bit.
equivalent of perfect vibration, sir. The benchmark. I gotta say, it's pretty amazing to finally be at this phase here. Where we're actually putting walls in, and it looks it's starting to look like a house. After all the shot creek pours, pilings, footings for excavation, it's been crazy just to get to this point. It's quite satisfying to see where it's at now. It's gonna be a unbelievable home when it's done. Can't beat that view. I have ex extensive experience in removing stuck vibrators. I don't really want to admit it, but. What way do you think it walked? It walked to the left? Uh, or to the to south? I feel like it's that way. You got this recorded? I do. Nice, okay. If it works, great footage. If not, garbage. Yeah. So if we pull it up. Okay, look where you want me to pull. What is solid right here? What are we, what are we at? Oh, you got a double cage of rebar. Uh, so if I get under it. Okay, yeah, I'm on it. So I want to fire it up and, and tug on it and I'll push at the same time. And hopefully it frees from under the... Uh... Yeah, I can feel that I'm pushing right on it. Hey Jag, step over for a sec. I gotta push it down with the board. So it's walked towards me. Oh yeah. So three ties down. It's it's on that one. Three ties. Yeah. So it is right. It's walked under this one. So we gotta get down about that gate. And on this side. Okay. I think we should go all the way back down again. Yeah. That suck. The vibrator beat us. Consider it a uh, casualty of the process. That thing was just buried in there. I think caught up in the cage of rebar. And it had the big, uh, big square commercial slab style tip on it, if you will. So uh, yeah, she is forever embedded into her forever home. All right. Well, contrary to what I said before about this stuff not setting up fast because of the. Uh, the Kim crystal in it, it actually is setting up pretty quick. So we're waiting for our last load. So we've kept our second to last load. It's got about a meter and a half on board. Uh, we're gonna keep nursing this every 10, 15 minutes because our last load is about 40 minutes away. But while we're killing time here, here's a little, a little system I came up with. I'm so proud, so proud of this. One of my biggest pet peeves when pumps are missing hoses or one pump's got twice as much hose as it's supposed to and not enough clamps or yada 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 so i taped one of these into the inside door of every pump and then we got these great little rubber made containers there's the size right there great for clamps i drill a couple little holes in the bottom just so they don't hold water 
And what we do is two inch clamps, two and a half inch clamps, three inch clamps are going here, but we're using them all. And there are four or five inch clamps we put back there. But yeah, these totes are really, really nice for storing clamps. I would highly recommend them. But I do, I do like this little sheet. For the most part, guys actually seem to abide by it too. What an amazing concept. Especially on this little rig where we uh, carry quite a bit of line, do quite a few line jobs. It's uh, easy to lose track of inventory. So the, the little bright pink highlighted sheet definitely seems to help the situation a bit. We'll check in when this last load gets here. Bang that off, lower lines out into the 38 meter pump, pump him out, pump some sugar through, pull the sponge. This guy will pump back into the mixer, pull the sponge. Get on out of here. We'll probably go wash it. So 1150 meters tomorrow, Maury's not going to be there. Yeah, his kid might be running the pump. Hunter's going to be there. I don't know if it's two or three pumps or... This guy won't be there. I got to do the fun job with that pump. 38. Every day is a, every day is a good day on the 38. Four loads. Four loads slab on grade. It might not be as exciting, but you know what happens though, once you run the big pump, there's no turning back. It's like it's like a deal with the devil. Why you turn back? Then you get old and crusty like me, and all you want to run is the line pump and the small boom. The fun pumps. Pump off. Big pumps are for the young kids. The thing is you go out, the setup, and stay there all day. I find that boring, man. I would rather be rushed to four different jobs on a small pump than be at one one big job with a big pump. I think hopping in the cab and getting back, too bad on your knees. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh you're 20 some years old. You're worried about your knees? No, man. I, I think the fun part is, is setting up, taking down, ripping like, from one job to the, the next. The thing is, what I like about this pump, like small pumps, is this. When you are moving the pump and guys are watching you and you move the pump within two minutes and they are impressed. Oh, I know, I know. They are impressed. Yeah, the small, the, sm the small pumps make it look like heroes. It's yes, really all yes. the machine. So Whereas, the, yeah, the big pumps, pump. everybody's like, what's taking so long? No, I agree. I agree. Jag's going to run the big pump. He wants to run the big pump forever now. He says he likes it. He likes being on the same site for 16 hours a day. Run, running patterns with the hose. Oh, it's the best. Ideally with some guy hugging the hose, the hose hugger at the end. It really makes the day shoot by. Let us know in the comments. What do you know? What do you, let us know in the comments. What do you think? Big pump, small pump, line pump? Have What's you your preference? The I've seen you. You're, you're very proficient on the big pump. Look, he's young. He's so excited. You can see the look <laughs> in his eyes. <laughs> yes. No, I think you will be very happy on the big pump. Yeah, it's a good life. I don't know much many things, but... On sticks, yeah, I can tell, I can say that on sticks I'm good. Yeah, I know, but you know they say you can train a monkey to run the sticks, that's the easy part. <laughs> Although I've seen certain monkeys that can't run them after 15 plus years, so that's another conversation. But yeah, now what's what's your preference? Big pump, small pump, commercial work, residential work? For me, at this stage, I enjoy residential work doing jobs like this, where everybody's on the same page. You know, you're working towards a common goal of a fine finished product rather than just slugging out the high volume stuff this brings me fulfillment in life at this current stage so teach their own all right last load is here so we're gonna pump this last little bit of wall off this last 15 feet and we'll blow some lines out into the 38 meter and then we'll pump the pumps out and Try and back the 38 out here without getting stuck. What's up? I'm gonna climb a short, like a couple feet. Try and pump the hopper down into the wall and then minimal blow out here. Are we yeah. About that? I don't know, or do we just keep it going and give them an extra half a meter on the ground? I think just finish it out and we'll, you can, yeah, we'll pump the rest out. We'll find a spot for it. All right. We're gonna cut Jag off, pump Sid down, blow the lines out, and Jag can swing back and pump into the mixer. Easy peasy. Right.
Uberite. Vou ver se eu There you go. You reach? Oh yeah. Like a glove. Okay, I'm gonna go down. I'll put the lid down. Just hang tight for a sec. Yeah, let me get the lid down here. Put on the lid. Within the lid. Close the other lid. Okay, Jag, just let it rip. Just let it go. Not too concerned here. We got our lid on top. And we get a little bit of air, we're all contained. One super full hopper and a bunch of empty hose. Hopper's, uh, hopper's super full, but what does he want to do with it? Bucket. Maybe kill the vibrator for the first few strokes. And I'll do all this crapola. Okay, welcome to the part of the show where we drag three inch hoses up. A really, really steep hill. If you want to hear a 43 year old dude huff and puff, just stay tuned, bear with me. It won't take long. We'll try and haul two of these buggers at a time. All right, here we go. Two hoses. Yeah! Oh, we're losing traction here. I feel like a face plant is a definite possibility here. Uh, okay, we're over the crest. And it's getting easier. was getting easier. Yeah. Wow. I am so out of shape. You see that? Two hoses. Two hoses at once. Old dozer. Not bad for old guy, eh? <laughs> old. Oh. You got same for your base like me. Call a uh, call the ambulance. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we won't do that again. I'm not gonna lie. That was absolutely terrible. Man, oh man, I've gotten soft. Woo! Man, guys who drag four inch and five inch line around all day, I got respect for you. Here I am crying about a little bit of three inch. This is nothing compared to that big commercial line. All right, so that's about it. Sid's packed up here. Just loading up the outrigger pads, load up a couple other little miscellaneous things, and uh, we will roll out it's never a fan of eoc when i'm packing up because even when you're just bringing the outriggers in it likes to run at uh way high of an rpm 
and it stresses me out not only because of the noise factor but the fuel consume factor so we'll just tone that down a little bit I'm more relaxed already anyhow another one in the books my favorite current project so we're uh, one level up I think the next thing here will be a little suspended slab then another level and onward and upward anyhow I think I'll finish off a video of the pump backing out here maybe I'll try and magnetize the pump or the camera to the side of the pump and get a different angle or something stay tuned you will see it will be the outro but first of course like share subscribe times three all right here we go axle cam take one <laughs>